Hello and welcome to New Horizons. Now today, or I should say more tonight, we are going to be trying to take some pictures of the king of the planets, Jupiter. Now I will see you guys tonight and we are going to see what we can get. Alright, well it is night and we have the telescope set up and we got Jupiter right up there. don't know if you guys can see it or not. Uh, but anyway, I have a camera attached. This is a $900 camera, so it is, it's a really good camera for this. And uh, this is what the camera sees. Now I know you guys aren't really going to be able to see it too well on the GoPro, but what we have right here is Jupiter and its moon Ganymede. And I'm going to take you guys through this process a little bit. I'm not going to show you everything because it's actually quite boring. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, how most cameras work on Earth is, you know, you just take a picture. But uh, space is not that easy because we have something called the atmosphere. Now the atmosphere is a very dynamic place. It wobbles and distorts light. And that can make an image be very blurry or very clear depending on the current conditions. For these kind of conditions, a special process has to be taken to get the best images. So as you can see, Jupiter's kind of wandering off right there. But you see how the, the planet is actually wobbling a little bit or like compressing, getting bigger and stuff. That is because of the atmosphere. And basically what, what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a video of Jupiter. And once we take a video of Jupiter, we're going to be putting it into the software that analyzes the video. And what it's going to do is going to take the best images from the, the video and put them together into something that's called a stack. It uh, takes the best frames and put them together into a single image. And this image is going to be a very much nicer image than what we have right now. So I'm going to show you guys this process. It's very simple. So we have Jupiter and Ganymede lined up. And all I gotta do is hit this button right here, and we are recording. All right, and it looks like we are done. I just took a 1,000 frame video, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the next 30 minutes just imaging the planet. I don't know what I'm really gonna get, because like I said, the atmosphere is very dynamic, and it can warp or like change the properties of the image coming in. Now you might not necessarily see that with your eye. Like, you know, we're watching Jupiter. I mean, that looks like it's pretty dang clear. And this is a very clear night. I mean, you can tell when there's a bad night. This is like a very good night. Um, but you don't necessarily know. Because if you put a bad video through these so stacking softwares, you're going to get a bad image. And, you know, we're kind of uh, troubleshooting, I guess, trying to find the best atmosphere conditions for taking a video. And we don't really know until we have done so. So that's why, you know, some people do like all night. Like, literally, they stay up all night just taking a picture of a single planet. It's just trying to find the best atmosphere conditions. Now, you know, a lot of things you can't control in that situation, but there are some ways you can. Now, what I'm doing right now is I waited pretty much most of the night till Jupiter got to the meridian, which the meridian means the highest point that any object will be in the night sky. So, I mean, that's, you know, Jupiter is pretty high up there right now. And, you know, being higher in the sky, that actually means there's less atmosphere. Um, versus looking on directly on the horizon. That's why the sun appears to dim down, you know, during a sunset because all the light is going through so much atmosphere. And, you know, the same applies for the planets. And, you know, we're trying to get the best image, so that's why I waited till Jupiter has hit the meridian or pretty, pretty damn close. But anyway, I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes just taking some videos and we're going to jump inside here in a little bit and stack them. So I will see you guys then. All right, guys. Well, I put all the data on a hard drive and brought it to my Mac because I just use a small computer to actually capture everything, but I use my bigger computer to process because a lot of these videos are really big. I use six gigabytes right here. What we are going to do is I have a program called ASI Video Stack, and what we are going to do is we're going to import all of the videos, which I'm only going to import to right about here. I want videos over 800 megabytes. So we're going to drag this in, and as you can see, we get all the videos in here. And if we click on them, we can see this is some of the video right here. Now, if you watch closely, you can see it better now, but you see all this wobbling? This is what I was telling you guys about the atmosphere. You can see it distorts the image quite a bit, but fortunately, the software will help, hopefully be able to help us with this issue. All right, so what we are going to do is very simple. We are going to simply hit stack. Now this process is going to take a little bit because like I said, a lot of these videos are huge and you know, there's a lot of them in here. So I will jump back on once we have stacked all of them. Well, all the videos have successfully stacked and we are in the editing portion now. 
So what we have right here is uh, different things we can do to this image. So if we want to pull more detail out, what we can do is pull this sharpen level. And as you see, it just sharpens the planet. And we can get a lot more detail out of that. Um, and we're now we're going to knock this back to normal. And I'm going to show you guys some of the other images real quick. And then I'll go through here um, by myself and just, you know, edit all the photos. I can show you guys them later. Um, let's see. This one should be interesting. Alright, so this one shows all of, or three of the four moons. So we got Ganymede, Europa, and I believe Io or Callisto, I can't remember. But anyway, we're going to sharpen this a little bit. Look at that. That's good. Actually, we need to dump it down just a little bit. Now, the thing with these, this type of editing is you don't want to go too far, because if I pull it too far, like this, all that grain, that's that's the atmosphere. That's what I was talking about earlier. And you know, we're trying to hide all the atmosphere as well as pull out a little bit of um, detail. So we can also mess with the brightness a little bit and dumb that down. Saturation, just a little bit more. I should have dumb that down a little bit. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's what the gist of it is. And you know, we're gonna save it. And then I'm just going to keep going through all these, but I want to show you guys something interesting. Let's see. Between... I saw it earlier. Ah, so between here. Um, like I said, Jupiter does rotate really quick, and as you can tell, as I swap between six or 5 and 6, you can see the planet does turn. Um, because, like I said, it makes one rotation in 9 hours, so that's, that's pretty quick. It's the fastest spinning planet in the solar system. Here's another example of that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and edit all these pictures because I don't think you guys would necessarily want to watch me for an hour doing this. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys the final results here in a little bit. So stay tuned.